Ace's brand new Nitro 5 has been a talking point for lots of tech savvies and game enthusiasts alike. Ace has finally decided to shift the old aging 30 series to the new 40 series, with DLSS frame generation in this new quote unquote gaming laptop. The Acer Nitro 5 MSRP is currently valued at 1550 USD. Which begs the question whether this piece of tech can still be considered a budget laptop. Now unless you are planning to take this laptop everywhere and want to game on the go, it may just be a better decision to buy a gaming PC. More on that later. The Acer Nitro 5 is about 1.02 inches thick and weighs a whopping 2.5 kilograms, which is ridiculously thick and heavy for a gaming laptop. It has a consistent aesthetic to last year featuring a mostly black on black design. That feels very premium considering the many cheap designs from previous years. It also now features a very interesting lid design which is an upgrade from last year's bare bones black lid. The laptop sports a very ventilated design, with integrated cooling situated outside the laptop's main chassis. The bottom of the laptop is decently ventilated, as well as the sides having a ton of vents, but we'll see how it performs in the thermal testing. The laptop also has a new minimal RGB lighting, with a keyboard that features four zones that can be customized. The new design isn't something that speaks volume, but is good enough coming from a Nitro 5. Starting at the back, there's a power port, a Thunderbolt 4, a HDMI 2.1 port, on the right side, you only get two USB 3.2s, one of them however being the Gen 2 Type-A that can support offline charging. Over on the left side, you get a full gigabit Ethernet port, another Gen 1 USB port and a headphone jack. Moving on to the actual usage of the laptop. The keyboard and the trackpad are about as mediocre as it gets. The touchpad tracks well, but the two clickers feel a bit mushy. However, I did have a few problems with the keyboard, namely the layout. I'm not sure whether it's the spacing or the sheer size of these massive keys, but I find myself clicking the caps lock button by accident way too much, so that's another thing to keep in mind. Another thing is that the keys, like the mouse clickers, feel mushy and unsatisfying, which can be quite fatiguing on your fingers especially when gaming. The screen is incredibly disappointing, especially at this price point. It has, of course, a decent 144Hz refresh rate with a 3 millisecond response time, but I find the colours to be lacking. Currently, I don't have any colour testing equipment for displays, however, to the naked eye, the colours are just dull and indifferent. Hey, it's Daniel here. If you're a streamer or you work, be sure to get a separate webcam or microphone, because the one included on the laptop is pretty f The laptop includes a 720p webcam, and the microphone is basic at best. Not good enough for gaming or streaming, but for a Zoom meeting, it's more than adequate. The speakers sound tiny and minute. Finally, let's get into the meat and grit of this laptop. Let's take a deep dive into the technical aspects, particularly the power and thermal performance of the Acer Nitro 5. We ran a 10 minute gaming test with Spider-Man Remastered to see how it handles the heat and power demands. The i7-12650H averages 63.38 watts of power consumption, while the RTX 4060 averages 65.68 watts during gaming. But what's truly concerning here are the temperatures. When gaming, the CPU P-Core averaged a clock speed of 3631 MHz, but experienced thermal throttling. The e cores wasn't faring much better, averaging only 3010 MHz under thermal constraints. The CPU temperature hit an average of a scorching 99 degrees Celsius, which in my opinion is simply unacceptable. However, on the GPU side, things are more stable. The GPU averaged a core clock of 2639 MHz, with memory clocking in at 2195 MHz. The GPU core temperature stayed at a more reasonable 68 degrees Celsius. Now let's talk about the laptop's thermal design. We opened the Nitro 5 and found a setup with five heat pipes, two of which cooled both the CPU and GPU. The VRM and phase cooling on the GPU looked beefy, and the fans were substantial, which explains why this laptop can get quite loud. However, there's an imbalance in the cooling setup. The GPU gets two extra heat pipes while the CPU only gets one. Additionally, the combined surface area of the fin stacks is limited, despite the beefy fan. This smaller surface area restricts cooling efficiency. From what we observed during the thermal testing, the primary culprits for the poor thermals are likely the cooling setup and potentially higher than usual CPU voltages. The CPU's power consumption peaked at 94 watts during our Cinebench tests. Further confirming these thermal issues, improvements in the thermal performance could have been achieved by providing larger fin stacks with more surface area ensuring balanced cooling for both the CPU and GPU, and optimizing voltage management. Unfortunately, on these newer models, the ability to undervolt has been locked out. Asus thermal design leaves much to be desired, and it's a missed opportunity to deliver a better gaming experience with improved cooling. This is one area where they should definitely reconsider their approach. 
Now that we've cracked open the laptop, let's dive into the upgrade options. But first, there's a bit of gripe here. Unlike the older models, this laptop doesn't have those convenient upgrade glory holes on the bottom. Instead, you'll have to remove the entire back panel to access the internals. Not the most user-friendly approach Acer could have taken. But there are some notable upsides to the upgrade potential. One of the major highlights is the inclusion of the space for an extra 2.5 inch drive, whether it's an SSD or HDD. This is a great feature, but keep in mind that it comes at the expense of some battery life, as it occupies a significant portion on the bottom of the laptop. Additionally, there's an extra M.2 NVMe slot, which is a welcome addition for those looking to expand their storage options further. You can easily upgrade it thanks to the SODIMM slot, in addition to the 16 gigabytes that come pre-installed. Moving on to the battery, we thoroughly tested it using the PC Mark Battery Life Suite to give you a comprehensive view of its performance. During our test, we found the following battery life figures. For the idle battery life, it was 8.9 hours. For the application use, it was 7.2 hours. For the video playback, it was 6.7 hours. And for the modern office task, it was 6.4 hours. But when it comes to gaming, it drops significantly to just 1.3 hours. So you better have your laptop plugged in. In standard casual use cases, the battery life is pretty decent, especially considering it's powered by a 57.2 watt hour battery. However, when you push it to the limits with gaming, as expected, the battery life can take a substantial hit. It's worth noting that we conducted these tests with the screen brightness set to 50% and disabled any keyboard lighting to provide a fair comparison. Now, let's talk about the laptop's charger. It comes with a beefy 280 watt AC adapter, which means you can charge the laptop quite quickly. So even though the gaming performance might drain the battery, you can quickly recharge it and get straight back into it with this powerful adapter. Before we dive into the benchmarks, let's quickly go over the key specs of this laptop. It's equipped with an older 12th gen Intel core, i7-12650H processor, featuring 6P cores and 4E cores for a total of 10 cores and 16 threads. In terms of memory, it boasts 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, running at a speedy 4,800 mega transfers per second. For graphics, it packs an RTX 4060 mobile GPU, delivering solid performance for gaming and creative tasks. And last but not least, it comes with a 512 gigabyte SSD ensuring fast storage access and quick load times for your applications. If that's not enough, as stated before, you can add your own SSD or HDD. Now let's jump into the benchmarks and see how this machine performs across various tasks, starting with the Adobe Suite. In the Puget benchmark for the Adobe Suite, the Acer Nitro 5 performs admirably in Photoshop and After Effects, but lags behind the 3070 Ti laptops by a noticeable margin. However, when it comes to Premiere Pro, it slightly outperformed the 2021 Swift X. Moving to the UL Procyon Office Productivity Benchmark, the Nitro 5 lands in the middle ground when it comes to Excel, but falls behind a bit in PowerPoint and Word compared to the two 3070 Ti 12700H laptops. In Blender, the Nitro 5 outpaces the Swift X, showing a 21% improvement in the classroom scene and an 18% boost in the BMW 27 scene. However, the 3070 Ti and 12700H laptops still have the upper hand performing 14-19% to 19 better in the classroom and 16-22% to 22 better in the bursty BMW 27C. When it comes to the Chromium code compile, the Nitro 5 faces thermal challenges, falling behind even the Swift X by 12%. In contrast, the two 3070Ti 12700H laptops significantly outperform the Nitro, boasting 44-50% to 50 better performance. In Cinebench R23, the Nitro lands in an interesting position. It sits between the two 12700H 3070Ti laptops, outperforming the GE76 in multi-core performances by 23%, while the Trident 500 SE surpasses the Nitro by 14%. However, the GE76 takes the lead in single-core performance, outdoing both the Nitro and the Predator by 9%. Moving on to the 3D mark, the scores are as expected. The Nitro 5 performs slightly worse than both the 3070Ti laptops, with the latter two outperforming it by 13-17%. to 17%. This trend continues in 3D mark wildlife, where the 3070Ti laptops outpace the Nitro by 7 to 15%. In our last benchmark, 3D Mark Storage, the Nitro takes the top spot, managing to outpace the Trident 500 SE by 2% and the GE76 by 6%. Their SSD in this laptop is indeed impressive, but keep in mind it's a 512GB drive, so you might want to consider upgrade options if you need more storage. Switching to gaming, the Acer Nitro 5 steps into the arena with commendable results across a variety of titles. The gaming chops of this machine are not to be underestimated. Even if we're not delving into the higher frame rates, it's still smooth. In CS2, the Nitro 5 offered a fluid and responsive experience, maintaining frame rates well above the refresh rate of the monitor, ensuring competitive gamers can stay ahead of the action. Venturing into the streets of Cyberpunk 2077, with DLSS frame generation, activated and ray tracing dialed to low, the laptop kept the gameplay smooth 
and above the 100 FPS mark. A solid performance for such a demanding title. For Rainbow Six Siege, the Nitro 5 did not disappoint. With settings optimized for performance, it achieved a remarkable 300 FPS, making every second of gameplay crisp and precise. Swinging across New York in Spider-Man Remastered, the Nitro 5 managed to deliver a more than playable experience at medium settings, even without the bells and whistles of ray tracing. When it came to racing in Forza Motorsport, the laptop crossed the finish line with around 100 FPS, a high dynamic render quality proving that newer titles are very much within its wheelhouse. Overall, the gaming experience was quite impressive, benefiting from the features like the DLSS frame generation in several titles. However, the CPU choice does raise an eyebrow. The i7-12650H seems overqualified for the task when a less powerful and thermally more efficient processor could potentially offer similar performance at a reduced cost. It's particularly noticeable in games like CS2, where despite not being CPU bound, the laptop struggled with the high temperatures, leading to thermal throttling. This not only diminishes the advantages of higher tier CPU, but also hints a missed opportunity for cost saving without sacrificing performance. So there you have it. We've taken an in-depth look at the Acer Nitro 5, and it's quite the gaming machine. But how does it stack up? And is it worth your hard-earned money? When it comes to performance, this laptop is a powerhouse. It handles titles like Cyberpunk and Rainbow Six Siege with ease, thanks in part to the DLSS frame generation. However, the choice of the i7-12650H processor. While powerful, might not make the most sense for all users, especially when it tends to heat up and throttle in less CPU intensive games like CS2. Now let's talk about price to performance. The Nitro 5 offers great gaming capabilities, but it's not the most budget friendly option. Its price point might lead some gamers pondering whether it's the best value for their needs. To put in perspective, let's compare it to a similar spec PC build coming in at 924 USD. The desktop offers more flexibility for upgrades and potentially better cooling, but it lacks the portability and convenience of a laptop. In the end, whether the Nitro 5 is worth it, it depends on your specific needs. If you prioritize portability and convenience, the laptop might be your go-to choice. But if you're more of a desktop enthusiast who values upgradability and cooling, the desktop PC should be a compelling option. Anyway guys, that's all for today. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also make sure to check out this video on the screen right now.